Yes, I see it. Okay, let's get going. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, the agenda for today's call, you know, the main purpose is to just provide folks in the community that are interested with an update on uh, Eclipse Leo, specifically on OSLC4J and also a few other um, selected topics, um, areas that we've been actively working on in the project. Um, please feel free to jump in with questions at, at any time. I you know, sort of like to keep this conversational. But I'll, uh, I do have some slides here that I'm going to go through and also jump over and, and try to demo a couple things as we go along here. So the first part of this um, is going to be to talk about OSLC for J and just a general update on LEO. Um, so I think you know folks that follow the LEO dev mailing list are probably aware of this, that we did have a, an official 1.0 release uh, from Eclipse. And the project has graduated from incubator status to, you know, a full-fledged Eclipse project. Basically, we'll talk about this in a bit, but the content of 1.0 is, you know, basically OSLC for J and also the, the test suites, although the test suites are not necessarily packaged up and consumable uh, like an SDK, like OSLC for J is. But we'll talk about all that uh, in just a bit here. Um, you know, basically the, the idea of the 1.0 was to address some of the challenges in OSLC adoption, have a library that um, assists people with uh, building provide OSLC providers and consumers, have some test suites that you can use to validate your implementations, and provide some sample code that you can use uh, to get started. And I've got the URL there for the, the Eclipse project. Um, just real quickly, uh, some background on Leo. I think most folks are probably familiar with it. I won't spend a lot of time on it. but Leo is a project that's created uh, with the goal of providing tools to enable the adoption of, of the OSLC specifications. Some of the content that we have out there right now are uh, code libraries, uh, helping developers to get started with OSLC implementations. There are some reference implementations and other samples that can be used as a starting point uh, for integrations or just to you know see how the code works, see how OSLC works. There are test suites and some test reporting. Um, that are, you know, continuously under development and being improved. Uh, but we do have a good bit of coverage today. I'll dig into the test suites a little bit more uh, as we go along here. And there's also, as I mentioned, samples. There's also some tutorials and documentation that are out there. There's a workshop uh, as well as samples of OSL integrations with various tools. But that, that's sort of the, uh, you know, just the overall background of Leo. But the main thing I want to talk about, at least in the first part of this uh, webcast, is uh, the stuff that we have made available sort of as LEO 1.0. And really, um, the main thing is OSLC for J, which is a Java library for both OSLC provider and consumer implementations. Um, OSLC for J is based on adding OSLC-related Java annotations and uh, JAXRS. Uh, uses JAXRS for REST services. We, we did do a webcast a little earlier in the summer that talked a good bit about OSLC for J. So some of this is going to be recap. But I wanted to be sure to give folks a good update on you know where things stood with OSLC for J today. So we'll, I'll go through a little bit of background on it. Then we'll talk a little bit about where it is you know right now. Um, the idea behind OSLC for J is that it uses the primary things that it provides for the developer is it helps you create um, Java representations of OSLC resources. So things like in the change management spec, change requests, or in the quality management spec, things like test plans, test cases, test scripts. So being able to represent those things as Java objects and then providing assistance with um, going from the Java object to the on-the-wire, if you will, representation, the RDF XML or the JSON representation of those resources. Um, but that was a pretty heavy burden before any toolkits like this existed to, to be able to you know, transform your, your programmatic representations of these resources into the uh, OSLC RDF or JSON representations. And that's really the... Um, one of the primary things that OSLC for J addresses. Uh, the other thing that it helps with, along with you know using JAXRS, is being able to write uh, write services that can respond to these HTTP requests, to things like the gets, the puts, the posts, the deletes, without having to write low-level HTTP code yourself. So um, 
out of the box, uh, OSLC for J uses Apache Wink as its JAX RS provider. Um, we are looking at potentially, um, you know, other JAX RS providers uh, besides Apache Wink uh, as you know optional additional plugins, things like Apache CXF or the the Oracle slash Sun Jersey implementation of JAX RS. But today, out of the box, we have Apache Wink as our JAX RS provider. So that that goes a long way towards you know hiding the the low level HTTP stuff from the programmer. Um, the other thing OSLC for J does is it takes care of building some of the OSLC artifacts, OSLC resources for you. So things like a service provider document and resource shapes, um, OSLC for J will, uh, will will do that based on these annotations that you add to your to your resources and to your JAXRS services. Um, we've tried to you know come up with quite a few samples um, in OSLC for J. So you know having the SDK itself isn't isn't very good unless we have uh, some samples that show you how to get started with it. So uh, we've got some, I call them stub providers. They're you know pretty basic samples for change management, quality management, and the automation specification. They do a good job of uh, giving examples of you know how you do your services, how you do your your gets, your puts, your posts, you know creation of resources. Um, but they don't really have anything behind them. They don't, they're they're not um, providers for a, a specific implementation of one of these specifications. They're more, you know, showing you how to do the interface itself, um, with, say, with the business logic missing. We also do have um, a Bugzilla adapter that has been talked about in a few places before, but that's a, probably a more, um, you know, real sample. It's a, it actually is a, a working implementation of an OSLC adapter or provider change management adapter or provider for uh, the Bugzilla bug tracking tool, defect tracking tool. And it does, um, that sample does have a full set of the delegated UI. So it has creation, selection, compact representation of resources, all the things that you'd expect to see uh, from an OSLC provider. It also has full support for the OSLC query syntax. That's another area that folks sometimes struggle with is, you know, how do I implement OSLC query? And that uh, the Bugzilla adapter provides a good example of that. And this adapter has actually been used, at least the code that's in Leo has been used as a, the basis for some real production uh, usages. So it's it's probably the closest thing that we have in Leo today of a, you know, a full-blown um, full uh, OSLC provider. I'm not going to read through all of this. This will be available in the slides for folks that want to take a look at it. But basically, just giving, um, trying to give a flavor of, you know, what what the OSLC for J stuff looks like. And as I mentioned, you know, primarily it's it's annotations. So if, you know, for a certain generation of Java programmers, annotations still look kind of funny, uh, folks like me. But that it, it's the the approach that we're taking in terms of being able to add additional information to plain old Java objects, so to enable them for um, for OSLC. So you can see um, in this example that I've got up here uh, that just a couple examples of you know the types of annotations that we would put on uh, on Java Gitter methods. So using a bean interface to add additional information to uh, to this object, so that when OSLC for J goes to build the resource shape, it can you know automatically for you fill in, you know, all the types of information that would need to be in a resource shape document or the things that would need to be in a service provider document. And down on the, the second half of the page uh, shows a little bit about just a very short example of what a um, what a JAXRS service to get a, a specific change. Like you can see from the annotation that, you know, this is for a get method, that the path to it is we're, we're expecting somebody to pass in the specific change request ID that we're going to return, and that we're going to this method's going to be able to provide the um, RDF XML or XML or JSON, and it's the OSLC for J um, JSON and RDF providers that take care of you know transforming the Java objects into serializing the Java objects into that actual RDF XML or application XML or JSON for you. You don't have to deal with those formats yourself as a developer. And you know, basically inside the method, you would be responsible for the business logic of 
what do I have to do to actually get that specific change request that was requested? You know, likely it's going to be some sort of a database lookup or perhaps a call out um, to some other change management system using its native API to get that change request and then return it, uh, you know, return it from this method and then it'll be serialized into RDFXML or whatever whatever the serialization format's going to be. And likewise on creation, if this would have been a post method, you know, we would um, take care of transforming it from RDF XML to, to our Java object so that we could deal with it and do whatever we needed to do on the back end to actually uh, create one of these um, new change requests. Um, so where is OSLC for j and I guess Leo in general at today? We, as I mentioned before, recently had a 1.0 release and graduated from incubator status. Um, 1.0 is basically considered to be OSLC for J plus the, um, the test suites that we have available. We do have a version of it packaged with the um, Eclipse Foundation approved versions of, of its dependencies, and we also packaged it without the dependencies so that uh, if your organization you know, needs to vet or you know, somehow approve specific versions of the dependencies, you can just pick up the jars and then provide the dependencies yourself. So there's those two different uh, packagings of it. Um, it is currently being used in shipping commercial and non-commercial OSLC integrations. So uh, it's, um, apologies, jumping around there. Um, it is actually being used today in shipping um, integrations. Um, probably one of the areas that it's uh, you know lacking in right now, we need additional documentation. We do have the basic Java doc there. But uh, one thing we'd like to get is more of a, you know, more cookbook type things. What are the steps that I need to go through to build an application using OSLC for J or to enable an existing application using it? Uh, there is an OSLC workshop out there in the docs repository that provides some of that. Um, it, it basically through a series of labs goes through the steps required. Uh, um, although I think one of the f things, feedback that we've gotten from the workshop is that it, it glosses over uh, maybe too much of the design considerations. So I think that's what we would need is a sort of a cookbook that, you know, starts from design principles and builds up an application from there. So that's something that we're taking a look at and we're actively soliciting, you know, contributions from as well. So anybody can help provide additional documentation for OSLC for J or any part of, of LEO. You can start a page on the wiki or take one of the existing pages and, and work with that. So I would encourage, you know, anyone that's actually started to get their hands dirty and see something lacking in the, the documentation to please uh, please go ahead and jump in and participate. Uh, real quickly here before I jump to the next part of the um, presentation, I just wanted to show a little bit of the, um, the Bugzilla adapter quickly. Let me uh, jump over to here. So basically I have the URL in my um, browser go to the, cat, the OSLC catalog, it prompts me for my Bugzilla user ID and password. And this is using a public Bugzilla server, which is on the uh, internet called Landfill. And that's how the, um, the adapter is configured by default when out of the box it'll be configured to talk to this landfill server. So one of the things the, this existing um, a Bugzilla adapter is useful for is if you just want to explore some things with OSLC, you can see you know, on this page here I have the service provider catalog. If I want, the, I won't go into details on the adapter, but it, should, it exposes each of the Bugzilla products as a service provider. So if I wanted to go to, I could go to a particular service provider here. Uh, I'm not sure why that's reprompting me. I guess it's for that particular product. And then you can see that for this particular service provider, these are the different things. And, and OSLC for J is providing, you know, all of this, exposing all of these URLs. It's not providing the HTML web page. That's something that's part of the sample. But in terms of all these URLs, exposing them properly, that's OSLC for J that's doing that. So there's a resource selection dialog, a creation dialog, creation factory, query capability. If I go to the query capability, um, I should be able to see all of the change requests that are there for that product. So 
the the Bugzilla sample is nice because instead of just having to you know use something like the REST client or Poster, you know one of the tools that we've seen on previous webcasts for dealing with the low-level representations, the RDF or the the JSON. Um, the Bugzilla helps you visualize some of this stuff by providing, you know, the HTML web pages, so you can do a little bit of, uh, more interactive exploring with some of these resources. So, uh, you know, if you're interested, I'd encourage you to go take a look at that. Um, there is documentation with it, and uh, you know how to get it configured to either use your own Bugzilla server or use the uh, landfill server that's on the internet. <laughs>